with the final chapter of My Little Ponies, Little Ponies by Baby Boo. Yes. <sighs> it all should be going well. I've at least remembered to go on excellent. All right, here we go. Here we go. Hi on the... Wait, you sit... We're on Procaster, right? Pretty much, yes. It's all okay. recording. High on the side of Mount Equinox, on the lip of the tallest spire of Canterlot Castle, was a balcony from which, on a clear day, one could see all of Equestria. Oh, fuck. So we're in a different setting this time. The princesses. Yep. They noticed oh something. In a literal Shit. sense, that is, not merely poetic. With no neighboring civilizations of comparable size and sophistication to hem the land with treaty borders, the legal definition of Equestria's territory was in fact everything Celestia surveyed by naked eye from her lofty palace. Aside from a few divots of land seated to lesser but respectable thrones, such as Minotaurus, Flutter Valley, and France. France? Wait. What? Um, I think the I think the writer had a little Mind fuck, because I think it might have been. Oh, I don't know. Was this probably made before they even made the official uh, uh, Equestria map? Um, hang on, let me look this up. Um, but, 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 but. um, this was last up. The first chapter was uploaded on June of 2012. I think they put out the map sometime later, maybe? I can't remember. Anyways. Well, let's just ignore the fact that this guy has no geological survey. I don't think it matters that badly. Anyways. Yeah. The actual balcony from which the law was defined was three stories down, in truth, but the principle remained. The only notable difference between the views was a glen on the far side of the aptly named Quibble Hills, anyway. <laughs> um. Quibble Hills. <laughs> what, are they paying homage to the freaking Demented cartoon movie? <laughs> it was not a clear day. As much to the contrary as possible, it was a heavily overcast night. While the local clouds had been cleared over Ponyville, far below, the wise and aloof pegasi of the upper reaches were keeping a thick sheet of cover high above the mountaintops in accordance with long-term weather plans. Celestia, Princess of the Sun, didn't care much for cloudy weather, Partially Pegasus, and even less inclined to discuss the whole fat layer thing. Uh, <laughs> what? Can you slow that down? And even less inclined to discuss the whole fat layer thing. She that... got a fat ass! Well, I... she has been. Well, she has been eating too much cake. I oh. can't help it. It's so yummy. <laughs> uh, well, my... I was about to say totally irrelevant and did not belong in the story at all, but. Oh, lighten up, Gonzo. You no, know you had that Molly thing coming. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just go. She wasn't bothered by rain and mist in themselves, but her solar regimen was always more difficult when she couldn't actually see the sun. So wait, she's a solar-powered princess? More like she needs to see the sun in order to raise and lower it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like a foal whose mother was out of sight, the mischievous orb would take the opportunity to play, dawdling as long as it could before setting to bed, or pretending to sing down while in fact sliding north. Well, that son's an asshole. It's like, fuck you, I'm a son. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Uh. Yeah. <sighs> Unlike a foal, it was made of pure elemental fire and weighed about 700 billion tons. Crap! Playing with it was no way to relax. After finally rustling down the rest of sun and dimming out the last raspberry traces of sunset, Celestia drooped, letting her wingtips sag to brush the floor, giving a deep, weary sigh. Behind her, a shadow of night separated from the darks. Oh, oh, I almost forgot to link this story, excuse me. Okay. I almost forgot. Excuse me. Sorry, it's okay. I got it. Anyway. Hearing and came into view as dust coated Luna, gliding to a graceful landing on the balcony. All hail the new Lunar Republic. I heard. Hearing the soft tap of silver shod hooves, Celestia turned with a smile and stepped down from her tiled platform. Rather than greeting her sister as intended to, go to her embarrassment of her. Embarrassment, she found herself yawning cavernously right in the younger princess's face. <laughs> oh, goodness. Do excuse me, sister. 
Celestia said sheepishly. I'm just so much more tired than usual at tonight. Luna's lips twitched around a smirk, and then she too burst into a yawn, covering her mouth and giving Celestia a dirty look as she finished. I too feel rest rested less than I would like. I bring this heavy air. It fosters sloth. Luna looked up to the dull canvas of the sky and sniffed. Fond of flying far and wide over the kingdom by night, she took even less delight in low visibility wet weather than did Celestia. At least the stars need to get together tonight. No, I suppose not. I did put on the most elegant sunset either. I'll copy from yesterday, to be honest. Celestia admitted. She fought back another yawn, but it powered through her defenses. Oh my, I am really exhausted. You feel like get to bed before you drop. So does the throne of Kenelot decree. Hmm. Luna knows what's best. <laughs> Luna swept her hoof imperiously toward the tower's door, the impish bright crescent of her grin robbing the gesture of offense. Celestia rolled her eyes and bowed her head with a slight, quiet smile. Well, as my liege commands. <laughs> Trouble away, my sweet, so long as you don't need any great feats of wakefulness. Luna gave a hasty nod. Of course, I only ask if you should see a kitchen steward as you're passing through to have a coffee service then up here. Coffee! Poor tired Lulu. Shall I have them bring up some of those chocolate drizzled cream puffs as well? Ooh! <laughs> Ch chocolate dr drizzled cream puffs? I want one! Me too! <laughs> Luna, Luna tossed a narrow glare towards Celestia's overly innocent smile, recognizing another move in the long-running debate concerning who ate how much, of what, and when, and whose cutie mark region was of greater disproportion to consequence. <laughs> <laughs> Well, so basically, who has, so basically, who has the fatter ass? <laughs> <laughs> In who's tones got, of great and costly, what? Who's got the plot? Who's got the plot? <laughs> who's got the plot? <laughs> do, do, do Luna got the booty? She do. <laughs> booty, 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 rocking everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Let's go. Okay. Let's, okay, let's go. In tones of great and costly concession, she said, "Why, yes, that would be lovely, sister dear. My pleasure." Celestia said, not quite chuckling. <laughs> with their backs, to, with their backs to one another, the royal sisters both paused at the same moment for another deep yawn, with identical curves of their necks and the same soft squeak on the exhale. Before Celestia descended into the tower, and Luna took a stand on the platform, raising her head to breathe deep the chilly air as he, she extended her senses out toward the sleeping moon. Neither were strongly enough affected to find anything suspicious, and their mysterious urge to fall over and do nothing useful. <laughs> Uh, wait. Oh, yeah. Princess K what? Go ahead. Princess Cadence in shining armor had found the time, somehow, to share a quiet evening, a roaring fire, and a summer sweet sparkling strawberry cordial. It was almost a disappointment that. when the rain let up, so perfectly had it framed the atmosphere of their cozy chamber. Neither said much as the gray light from the windows faded and gave way to flickering amber from the hearth. Slumped side to side, they converse as much as needed by the rhythms of their breath. Hmm. Hmm. It's romantic. Armor had a book of magic improvement exercises he was theoretically reading, while Cadence was quite deliberately doing nothing but watch the fire dance. Both were trying not to think about work and largely succeeding. At close to the same moment, both frowned thoughtfully and raised their heads. Armor caught Cadence's expression, mirroring his own, and waved a hoof in the general direction of his desk. Did we have some sort of appointment this evening? He asked cautiously. No. Cadence's eyes swept back and forth as she considered eventually shaking her head with a shade more confidence. No, I really can't think of anything. There shouldn't be. I moved mountains to clear out this evening for the both of us. But I know what you mean. I had the strangest thing that we were supposed to be somewhere. <laughs> Yeah, like, we should be making some kind of token appearance at a party or something? Uh-oh. Um... I think they somehow were almost inclined to head straight to Ponyville. Like the story, yeah. Yes. Yes. Wonder if... Oh, fuck. Oh, crap. I wonder... After musing a moment longer, they shrugged, mutually baffled. Well, I hope it's nothing important. Caden said in a tone untouched by concern. Eh, 
some pony thinks it is, we'll hear about it in the morning. I don't hear any explosions, and I don't think your aunt has dropped the moon, so... <laughs> aunt? <laughs> Shining Armor slipped his hoof around Cadence's shoulders and drew her closer, nuzzling the sunrise pink curls of mane around her ears. It can't be more important than this. You big softy. <laughs> wow! Oh. Hello! <laughs> Down in Ponyville. Down in Ponyville, in a darkened bedroom, Lyra Heartstrings opened her eyes wide, though she remained fast asleep. Lyra? Was she in any part of this before? I, I don't think. I don't think so. Don't think so either. Staring blindly into the shadows, she gave a soft moan, and then another, lips gradually forming the sound into repetitive words. With each recitation, her voice grew louder and more insistent until she was all about shouting in a droning hollow voice. Red, red, red. What? The earth pony sleeping beside her woke fuzzily and blinked with the grumpy uncertainty of the newly awakened, turning rapidly to concern at Lyra's eerie somnolent chanting. Oh boy, Bon Bon. <laughs> Lyra, what's, what's going on? Lyra's eyes gazed at nothing, unblinking, still calling out hypnotically into the night. Rarity, rarity. Hit her Are you what? talking in your? Are you talking in your sleep? Hey, come on! You're creeping me out. Poking Lyra's shoulder did nothing to stop the strange chant, but a more energetic, frankly frightened shaking finally produced some response. Lyra's head turned slowly and mechanically, and an uncanny smile spread on her lips. She felt quiet for a heartbeat, then spoke again, softer but still in a weird, toneless croak. Rarity is so wonderful. She. <laughs> what? What? I think it's my time. We make like Nick of Left 4 Dead 2, grab a frying pan, and whack her up ahead. Yes. Or the demo man. pass in silence. Lara awoke at last with a startled squawk as she was kicked from the bed and hit the floor. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then. And, well, chapter five. All's well that ends. Eventually! Eventually?! <laughs> yes. There better be any re- There better be a way to end this, seriously! The strange fog cleared from Rainbow Dash's eyes with a nearly audible snap, and she twitched in surprise to find herself right up in Fluttershy's face, lips just a shadow's width away from Fluttershy's muzzle. Ooh, they were about to kissy kissy! Oh, Fluttershy supporters, now is your chance to speak up. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! She backed off hastily, shaking her head. What's going on? I was just... Uh, sorry about that, Shy. I, whatever it was, I don't know what just happened. But it's okay. But Shy flew forward and squeezed Dash in a hug. I'm just glad you're not a zombie. Uh. Well, Dash was behaving like a zombie. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Uh, sure. It's one of my most any awesome qualities. Dash said uncertainly, then gave downward. Hey, what happened to Spike? Fluttershy covered her hooves with her mouth. Oh no, he's hurt! Spikey, Spikey! Ah! Shit. In a flash, Rarity was kneeling by the dragon, who lay partially buried in books by the foot of the shelf against which he'd been thrown by the blast. So he did get hurt! Yes, apparently so. He so. Did it. so he did pretty much intervene that little... <laughs> A uh, toss of magic. Ooh. Yeah. She flung aside the books with an impatient flash of magic and lifted his head, careful not to jostle or squeeze, cradling him to her chest. Oh, my little hero. So we're going with the Sparity pair. Sparity supporters, now's your chance to speak up. Ship it like motherfucking FedEx. Ship it like FedEx. Ship it! it! I think we got it. I think we got it now. We got a lot of shipping going on. Yes. <laughs> Let's go. Okay. Second. Twilight jumped off the stairs and pelted across the room, heedlessly scattering bunnies. So they're still there too. Hmm. Evidently, they haven't. Uh... Yeah. Midway there, though, she staggered, legs suddenly rubbery beneath her and head swimming. And when she reached Spike, it was by tumbling heavily to her knees beside him. To the others, it probably looked like pure emotional collapse, and that was indeed the major part of it. 
Well, the dizziness and physical faltering was caused by the sudden arrival, inside her mind, of a complete additional set of memories for the previous hour. Even stranger was the crawling feeling that some of her internal models of her friends now had an extra hour of memories of their own. A bizarre mental sensation for which there was no proper word, despite the fact that a fair number of other unicorns before her had felt it. Um, what? The disorientation was nothing, no, beside the sheer weight of guilt. The whole mess, from one end of this strange day to the other, was entirely and inescapably the responsibility of Twilight Sparkle. But it was Spike, her little baby dragon, who had paid the price for it. Oh, shit. It was her, only her, who had cast an untried spell without following procedure. She had failed to check for unwanted influences and failed to clear the ambient in Ethereum. She had left a dangerous book lying around, and even though it shouldn't have been possible for an untrained family to summon anything just by sounding out words without intention and throwing together only those components that were available in the kitchen, there was still no evading the blame. She should have been aware that Sweetie Belle was actually that bad at cooking. That little... Marshmallow! Ah! Oh, oh no, shit! Sure. Do you think that, that we already learned that Sweetie Belle will even burn juice? And not to mention she put toast in a bowl! On top of all that, Kane piled the burden of guilt her duplicates felt over her treatment of rarity, both the toy and the real one. The boulder of remorse crushed her to the floor and squeezed burning tears from her eyes. He pressed her face to spikes, weeping. Aww. It's all my fault. All my fault. Oh, Spike, my number one. How can I ever forgive myself? She dissolved in helpless, choking sobs. Rarity had been tempted to channel her own worry into anger at the scholar, but the hopeless sorrow in Twilight's voice tore at her heart, and she reached her forehead over Spike's chest to stroke Twilight's mane. The gesture only made Twilight feel worse, reminded that she, some version of herself, had intended the blow for Rarity and been willing to lie to a scared and confused echo of the white unicorn to accomplish it. Shaking with grief, she whispered, Please be alright, please. The others gathered in a loose circle around them, not wanting to crowd too close, biting their lips, shuffling uncomfortably, chins trembling and eyes shimmering in sympathy. Um... There are those in the surroundings of Equestria, among the griffins, among the dragons, and especially among the diamond dogs, who look on the ponies with spiteful jealousy. The ponies live the good life, some would say, in so many words, while every other being that doesn't kiss up to them gets the short end of the stick. Blessed with magic to command the elements, graceful with rulers of can <clears throat> graced with rulers of uncanny power and unparalleled benevolence, even giving clear signs by forces beyond moral kenning of their personal purposes in life, the ponies go through their days happy and well-fed, without nearly as much effort as many other beings must go through. And they're so well off, they burst into spontaneous citywide musical numbers on a daily basis, and it's not like they never did anything to earn their luxury except be born with big eyes and pastel hides. Well, all right then. Okay then. Shrug. <clears throat> Dot JPEG. Living right along. What these envious souls don't realize, and really there's no way they could, is that while it is true the ponies are unusually well favored by fortune, all the creatures in the world are still, among all possible universes in the grand cosmic panoply, residents in one of the most merciful. I think we all know what's coming now. Yep. What now? What now? Are we gonna go circle the life on us? Twilight Sparkle's tears flow down on their cheeks and on the spikes, and Spike's eyes open. Hallelujah! Holy shit! They all it's the po- It's that thing from Pokemon, the first movie! Pikachu yeah, tears! Pikachu tears! Hallelujah! Pika holy shit! The oldest cliche in the fucking book, and it's here. Pikachu tears! <laughs> Who would have thought of that? Show me! Fucking show me! <laughs> A glassy, sozzled smile dawned across Spike's face features. What? What happened? Oh, Spikey! 
Rarity squealed, joyfully peppering the dragon's face with rapid-fire kisses, which didn't really help him get any less days. My dear brave protector, how do you feel? I feel... I feel so... friendly. Friendly? Friendly. Friendly? Friendly? It's mine! Wait, 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 wait. Elements of Harmony, destroys villain, boom! Gone. Not friendly. How does that make sense? Did he even, that even blew up the fucking... It even blew up... I'm sorry, very sorry about this, uh, Twilight. They freaking... The Elements of Harmony freaking killed... <laughs> freaking yeah. killed King Sombra! I know, it's like... I mean, with the Elements of Harmony, they would Sailor Moon a villain. Bam! Gone. But in this fanfiction... Friendly? Well, I don't even know. I think it's because the, I think it's because the freaking the small elements of Harney was probably a fourteenth of the power of estimate. Probably a small percentage of power, and it pretty much was going up against a big dragon. Well, let's keep reading. Let's find out. Twilight let out a sound, something like a watery laugh, and hugged him close, barely restraining herself from squeezing with all her might. Spike gave her a glowing, somewhat perplexed smile and gently pushed aside her embrace, not in rejection, just wanting to get off the floor. His little claw held her hoof assuringly as he got to his feet. A room full of ponies burst out in cheers and laughter, sobbing their hooves and dancing in delight, much to the consternation of the bunnies. Spike's eyes gleamed with a fresh brightness, as though the world were a wonderful new thing, and he wavered slightly as he stood. Whether it was the harmony blast or the, all the books of the head, or Rarity's kisses, he looked like he'd gotten the secret of supply of aged cider in the Apple family cellar. Uh, can we not um, use that? Can we go with something a lot more, you know, fitting? Yeah. Twilight and Rarity together helped him stand, neither willing to move an inch from his side. Spike gave them a saintly look of good cheer and clasped his hands over his heart. With the dignified sincerity of a happy drunk, he declared, I love you guys. Aww. That's so cute. He pointed at them, then reached up and clasped their shoulders, carrying on. I love all you guys, and I love Pinky. Wow. Real friendship. That's so sweet. Aww. Humoring him with gentle agreements as he continued to expound on the topic and grinning themselves at the sheer radiant joy in his eyes, they turned him around and walked him toward his place to sit. He's never going to wash his face again. <laughs> <laughs> That's true enough. That's true enough. <laughs> All right. A little more than an hour later, the library was still alight and alive with bustling ponies. Neither Applejack nor Rarity had been in any hurry to get home. Both seemed to feel they'd missed out on the fun part of the evening, and Applejack couldn't bring herself to leave the front door lying in the row while it was in her power to fix it. Rainbow Dash had needed to hurry off to finish up with her weather crew, but with that taken care of, she'd seen... Excuse me. She'd seen Applejack still at work on the door and flown back down to help. Rarity, not to be undone within the Department of Generous Gestures, stayed with the excuse of repairing Pinky's mangled dresses. Fru fru Well, not that extreme anymore. Yeah, yeah. thank God. fru Next. Hang on. The Turkish was just getting on me for something. Who? Turkish Phantom, we were working on a script before this, but no worries, it's nothing important. Uh. Scootaloo had been picked up by her parents, a fine, upstanding Pegasus couple with respectable jobs and no major personality disorders. Uh, we haven't um. seen, well, we haven't seen Scootaloo's parents yet. It's not even proven yet, so oh. we don't get, we don't Twilight have any. Rather like, Twilight rather liked them. They rarely got caught up in the periodic mass hysteria that characterized life in Ponyville. <laughs> <laughs> she wouldn't mind seeing more of them. Apple Bloom and Sweetie Belle stayed along with their sisters, thrilled at the opportunity to stay up past bedtime. <laughs> After what Sweetie Belle did, yeah, curfew, Missy. <laughs> After cleaning the kitchen and bathroom, both had promptly passed out atop a large square cushion, curled up back to back with their tails draped over their noses, and go oh, posing for the dictionary illustration of adorable. Aww. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Aww. Great. Sweet. Hold on. Let me get the defib. No, 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 no. It's not necessary. Sweetie Belle, you get one pass. 
One pass! Spy had recovered swiftly from the grogginess, still unusually chipper and energetic, but no worse than he sometimes got after too much sugar. Ignoring his protests of feeling fine, Twilight had subjected him to every magical scan she could think of, with some help from Rarity, who lacked formal education but at least possessed certain fundamental magical senses. Between the two of them and all the resources of the library, as far as they could tell, the only effect of the Harmony Blast had been to sweep clean any dark or evil side he might have had. Once the initial euphoria died down, he seemed entirely the same as ever, which, when she thought about it, gave Twilight a certain warmth of pride for the little guy. Sweet, he's back to normal. Mm -hmm. Oh, so their elements of harmony wipes away the e the supposed evil, if you will. Evil! Completely. Mm hmm After the magic examination, Fluttershy had given him a thorough physical inspection as well, with a determined attitude that brooks no objection. As firm as her fear of dragons remained... She had been outraged after Spike's birthday to learn how indifferent Ponyville's medical professionals were about their own inability to help an entire sentient species, and taken it on herself to study every resource on dragon physiology for all they could dig up. Given yeah. the distressingly slim state of equestrian research in that area, combined with her extensive knowledge of veterinary care, she probably qualified, ironically, as one of the country's top dragon health experts. Well, might as well, since no other vet or doctor in Ponyville, not, let alone all of Equestria, can help a freaking dragon. Yeah. Of course, the top expert would likely be some pony able to actually approach an adult specimen, though Twilight had a strong suspicion that nothing would stop the Yellow Pegasus if she ever came across a grown dragon who was sick or wounded. Fluttershy's bemused conclusion was that, contrary to injury, the elements had left Spike in a state of uncommonly perfect health, without so much as a split scale or a strained muscle. Nonetheless, she had chided Twilight for carelessness in a soft, gentle way that sung like lashes of fire. Every now and then, Twilight thought if Fluttershy had been any more comfortable by nature around other ponies, her cutie mark might have been that of a school principal or possibly a prison warden. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> well... <laughs> Fluttershy may be shy, but she is straight. With Angel Bunny having taken over herding the other rabbits away, or more precisely scaring the grass out of them until they fled into this night, Fluttershy stayed behind complaining that now she was wide awake and restless. Hearing the full ridiculous story behind all the fuss hadn't improved her mood, nor her estimate of Eddie Pony's sanity. <laughs> well, Rarity said it some time ago, like what was it, last night? That nothing that Twilight had said made any sort of sense. <laughs> yep. nor, nor was it even close to sane. Hmm. Rumpy Shy was a little unnerving, with like a pillow with a hissing fuse. But Pinky had, with greater than typical diplomacy, cajoled her into cheering up. The two of them were now off to one side, quietly playing with Pinky's dolls. Well, hopefully they're all back to normal. And Twilight... Yeah would stay away from animating them ever fucking again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> For her own part, Twilight sat in an undeclared but firm bubble of peace, buzzing away at her long-delayed essay. Being left alone to work without actually being alone made the previously onerous task feel a little more agreeable. And with a genuine new experience of the elements of harmony in action, however peculiar the circumstance, she had more than enough inspiration to fill a thousand words and another thousand. Ooh. Realizing that she had zipped past the 3,000 word mark, she brought the essay around to a tidy conclusion and reviewed it with a glow of satisfaction. She could have gone on a quite a bit longer, but decided that it couldn't hurt to save some observations on the nuances of similarity and narrative to draw on for future assignments. Assured that every dot and comma was in place, she rolled up the long essay scroll and lifted a separate sheet to add a letter for her teacher. Dear Princess Celestia, Today, I learned that sometimes you get more done by taking a break to have fun with friends than by working too hard all alone. I also learned that being in a, being in a good mood doesn't mean you can't ignore workplace safety rules, which isn't a friendship lesson, but it's something I won't forget in a hurry. On a related, <laughs> <laughs> on a related note, I'm afraid I have another item of dangerous artifacts vault. It's safely contained for now, though, and I wouldn't rate it more than a category three, so it can wait till tomorrow at least. If you could send some point to collect it who is qualified in magical medicine and willing to examine a dragon, I would greatly appreciate it. We think everything's okay, but I would really like a second, or technically a fourth, opinion. 
The attached essay should explain the connection between these requests and the lessons above before, above but better than I faced here. Your faithful student, Twilight Sparkle. And now, all together now. Now, my little pony. <laughs> My little pony. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, it's the end. Yep. Pretty much. Pretty much. We pretty much wrapped it up pretty oh, and, nicely. Um, oh, and P.S. Keep Sweetie Belle away from the kitchen. Ah! <laughs> 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 Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> oh. Oh, lordy, lordy, lordy. That was an awesome fanfic. That was fun. Yes, it was. <laughs> oh, tense, bud, fun. Hmm. Oh, why didn't you know it? The same person, Baby Boo, is writing another fanfiction. This one with, um, Trixie... Yeah, it's the Trixie fanfic. Yay! She basically befriends the elements of harmony... To try and get the elements of harmony for herself. I don't think it works that way, hon. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was a bit of a short stream. 